welcome back to my channel if you are new then hello welcome don't forget to subscribe as you can tell i'm a little bit done up a bit more than usual because i'm going out after this but um yeah today's video is requested well was requested based on one of my previous videos about maths and science and nursing a lot of people asked if i can make a video about drug calculations and going into more detail about them and how to calculate them because it is like a skill you would use literally every day and it's so useful for like to know just before you go on placement and even though you will be taught how to do it before you go on placement it's still good to kind of like have a heads up before especially if you're not that strong with your math so I'm here to help you guys I'm gonna make this kind of interactive so I'm gonna for each kind of type of question I'm gonna give an example and then I'm going to give one for you to try so I'm gonna do like do up Dora Explorer like wait for you to find out the answer and then give the correct answer what was your favorite part of the trip the sun is really messing up my lighting. <laughs> so why are drug calculations used? They are basically used so you know how much of a certain drug you need to give to a patient. Obviously, if you you get your prescription from the doctors and they will come with like the patient information and you will be able to give the patient the right dosage at the right time. That's something you have to do. You don't And you don't wanna mess that up. You don't wanna give too much or too little of a medication to a patient, but you will never do a drug calculation and make up a drug or make up a medication without someone else checking it for you, no matter how qualified you are. So everyone has their days where they mess up, so it's always important that someone does check it. So that is one of the good things about drug calculations. Like if you do get something wrong, someone's always there to correct it for you. Someone has to correct it for you, otherwise that's bad practice. And for paediatrics, dosages are normally lower, so it is a lot more important that you do get this right and that you know how to kind of maybe crush a tablet, cut a tablet in half or in quarters because obviously children can't take as much of a drug as older children can or as young adults can or older adults. So yeah, let me just stop waffling and I'll begin. <laughs> so the first thing, like the foundation for drug calculations that you really, really need to know is metric conversions. If you don't know how to do that, then you might struggle. Sometimes it's quite nice because on the prescription, you will have the same kind of unit as what's on the tablet or the bottle. So for example, like milliliters or milligrams, something like that. Um, so normally it's quite lucky, but sometimes you might have to kind of do conversions. So it's important to know them. And I'm going to put a little conversion chart on the screen so you can pause it, make notes, have a look at that. That is important to know. So for example, thousand grams in a kilogram, those kind of things, like even though that's a bit much, <laughs> you're never gonna give a patient one kilogram or something, but those that kind of type of um, conversion, particularly with like micrograms and things like that, that's really important to know. And if you did watch the previous video that I made about maths and science in nursing, which I'll link below, I mentioned a bit about NHS. So that is the like, I guess equation that you use when you're doing drug calculations. So what you need divided by what you have times the solution, if it is a solution, but if it's a tablet, then you just do what you need divided by what you have. And I'll go into detail about that in a minute. But that is basically the foundation of memorizing and knowing how to calculate drug calculations. So I'm gonna start off with the kind of easier side, which is calculating like how many tablets you need to give to a patient. So with tablet calculations, obviously you're not dealing with solutions, you're not dealing with liquid medication, so you don't need the S part of NHS. So you're just doing what you need divided by what you have. So I will put up an example on the screen. A patient is prescribed one gram of paracetamol, but the tablets come in 500 milligrams. It can be easy to do a conversion. So they, the patient needs one gram. You have tablets which are 500 milligrams each. So you've got grams and milligrams. These are two different units. So it is easier to convert your grams into milligrams. So one gram is a thousand milligrams. So 1000 milligrams divided by 500 milligrams is two. So that answer you've got from doing what you need divided by what you have, that two means you need two tablets because you need two times 500 milligrams to reach the 1000 milligrams or the one gram that the patient is prescribed. So hopefully that makes sense. So now that I've given an example, I'm gonna give you guys one to try. So a patient has been prescribed 1,500 milligrams of a drug and the stock has 500 milligrams. So you need 1,500 milligrams 
and the stock is 500 milligrams, how many tablets does the patient need? So you can pause it and then we'll come back. So the answer is three. Obviously you're doing 1,500, what you need divided by 500, which is what you have, so that is three. So three tablets is what the patient would need. Hopefully that makes sense. That's kind of the more basic side. I'm gonna move on to liquid dosage calculations. So this is when you need your full NHS need divided by have times solution. So I'll give you an example first. So patient has been prescribed 60 milligrams of furosemide, which is a drug that treats hypertension, heart failure, and edema apparently. Okay, edema, which is basically kind of like swelling with fluid that's the most simple way to explain it and the stock is 40 milligrams per two milliliters of the liquid so you need 60 milligrams you have 40 milligrams per two mil so you do 60 which is what you need divided by 40 which is what you have times by two milliliters which is the solution so the answer is three millilitres. That is how much of the liquid that you would need. So three millilitres contains that 60 milligrams that the patient needs. Hopefully the visual aid is helping you guys. I don't really know. So that's examples. So now you guys can try. The patient was prescribed 60 milligrams of a drug. The stock, so what you have is 25 milligrams per millilitre of the liquid drug. So how many millilitres of the drug does the patient need? Pause the video and work it out. And don't cheat because this is for your own good. Um, so the answer is 24 mil... 24? 2.4 millilitres. Because you have... You need 60 milligrams and the stock is 25 milligrams per mil. So you do 60 divided by 25. So what you need divided by what you have. And then per millilitre. So that's per one millilitre. So you don't need to times it by one because it's the same number. So it's effectively just 60 divided by 25 which equals 2.4 millilitres. That was kind of a trick, but I hope you guys got it right. I hope I'm helping you. <laughs> and then the last kind of section I'm going to talk about is working out drug calculations based on a patient's weight. So sometimes certain prescriptions that patients get are based on their weight. So every kilo, for every kilo they weigh, they'll have a certain amount of a drug. And this you see quite a lot in paediatrics and it is particularly important. That's why it's so important to keep like weights, regular weights recorded like all the time and make sure that that's in the um, hospital system so the doctors can see it for prescriptions. So the nurses know um, on the drug chart how much they need to give based on the weight. And you can check these kind of calculations in the BNF, which is basically the dictionary for medicines. And they have them in drug rooms anyway on wards but it's good to kind of have it in your head. Regulating that weight is especially really important for young children and infants. And infants are basically babies under the age of one, so from birth to one, because obviously they're growing all the time. They're always hopefully gaining weight. So you have to keep on top of that to make sure that they don't get given too much or too little of a drug. So my example is the patient weighs 55 kilograms and they need four milligrams per kilogram of their weight of phenytoin, which is an anti-seizure medicine. So how much would they need? So if it's four milligrams per kilo and they weigh 55 kilograms, it's simply just 55 times four, which is 220 milligrams. So that is quite a simple calculation. So now you guys can try. The patient weighs 25 kilograms and they need 2.2 milligrams per kilogram of their weight of a drug how much of the drug do they need? How many milligrams? So pause it and come back. Um, so the answer is 55, so you just simply just do 25 times 2.2 to get your answer, 55 milligrams. Yeah, those, that's kind of my taster of the main areas of drug calculations that are the most important and that are probably the ones that you'll come across every single day um, on the ward, on placement, whatever, whether you're qualified, whether you're not qualified, whether you're literally just starting out in, on placement. You'll also learn in nursing school about interpreting graphs, interpreting data um, based on like height and weight and like calculating how much to put in a syringe. And you'll learn that physically. I think the best way to learn that is when you're on placement because you've got all the equipment in front of you and you can learn with someone who's experienced in doing it, they're qualified, they know exactly how to show you what to do. So that is just basically like the basics and the most important things 
I think that I've just covered there. All of that is very important for your medication management and for your skills that you can tick off when you're on placement. So yeah, I hope that video has been helpful for you, particularly for people who are starting out soon in nursing school. This will definitely give you a head start because this is the kind of stuff that you'll do just before you go onto your first placement. I hope this video was helpful for the people who wanted me to make it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below what you think and if you want me to make any more kind of videos like this because I know that it definitely helps people and it would have helped me a lot as well last year to see kind of videos like this so give me as much feedback as you want i really appreciate it thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye